Hello, everyone. It's Becky here at Aunt Bex Creations, and I'm going to try to go live every day this week at three o'clock um, just to come on for a little bit and do a project together and take our minds off everything that's going crazy in the world. OK, so I'm just going to do three o'clock on most every day if I can manage it. And. Just, and, and if somebody else is supposed to come on at that time, I'll limit my time on to an hour. I know there's a couple other people on right now, but I wanted to come on and just let's brighten the day a little bit and do something fun together and then um, take a break. And I thought it would be good if quite a number of us could just pop on and do a live, whatever, if you've got a project in mind, or if you just want to share something, just pop on live. If you do live videos, just pop on, share a little bit of something every day this week, if you can. I know Mary's on most every day anyway, but I got some emails today that I know a lot of people are struggling with anxiety over everything that's going on right now. And I thought this would be a good break so if each of us popped on for an hour or two each day, y'all would have something fun to do and we could just not think about the problems of the world while we're together. How's that sound? I went out and I got some blooms to share with you guys. For one thing, I've got these camellias and I'm just going to take these leaves off here. Let's see, does these have cutters on them? Yes. I just like to take the leaves off that would, I don't like to have leaves in the water. And I'm just going to put them in this jug right here. So there's some three camellias. And then I went and I got some forsythia. Um, I'm, if I take these off that are going to be in the water, I'm probably not going to end up with very many blooms, but that's okay. This is just, it's in too shady of an area and um, here at the cottage, but that's for Scythia. This is the bush that Scott forbade me to plant for years because this is what his mother would make him go cut switches for when he was naughty. So for the longest time, Scott would not allow me to plant a for Scythia bush for nothing, not a thing. So, yeah. But I thought it could be nice to have a little bouquet of what's blooming and pretty outside to show that there's still beauty all around us. We're just being bombarded with all the bad stuff right now and we need to just take a break. So let's take a break together. And if these root, that'd be a bonus prop, a bonus out of it. Now this white, I've heard it called all kinds of stuff. And if somebody else has... Um, you know, the botanical name down pat. Um, I've always been told this is, what is it, Spirea or Snow on the Mountain. So it, I don't, I'm not sure the correct name of it. Um, maybe Kathy would know if she was here, but we always called that Snow on the Mountain. And it blooms in the spring. And it's all in the woods over there. So I said, you know, that need, I need to get a little bit of that. Scott suggested that he and I walk around in the woods and do a video on everything that's blooming right now and talk about it. I don't know if that'd be something you guys would be interested in or not, but we might do that. I'll just tuck that little piece in there. So there's my bouquet. It's a good old country bouquet. Just a little bit of flowers and that'll be my my goodies. Let me come up a little bit so you guys can see it. There you go. It's got a little bit of forsythia bloom still peeking in it. So there's some flowers. We'll come back down to the table. Try to go slower than I normally do so I don't make y'all sick. So we'll set this off to the side here so I can still enjoy it. All right. 
And I have some mail to share. I got a postcard from Journey. Is it Journey? Yeah, it's Journey. I know Mary got one of these too. Euphorbia marginata. Is that right, Rhonda? I hope it's close. <laughs> so this will go in my, my Happy Meal journal. And then Sharon sent me an envelope of goodies. I thought I'd share that real quick. It looks like some handmade papers here. Got a couple sheets. And a pretty napkin with birds and flowers. And some tissue. And then this beautiful card. It says it's always the small pieces that make the big picture. Isn't that the truth? And I'll put all... I'll put this and maybe this tissue paper in my um, my Happy Mail journal. And then the rest of this I'll save to stick in projects. So thank you, Sharon. That's Sharon Marlowe. And then today I got a, a the cutest kitty cat came in my mailbox from Kathy Whitney. I was close enough. Okay, awesome. Spirea is also called Meadow Sweets. Hi, Lisa. So Kathy got sent me a package here. Oh, my. Oh, my. I hope that's not something broken. It sure is making a lot of crispy sounds. It's a birthday package. Hope your birthday was great. Wanted to send you an envelope to too, even though you didn't get to swap because of the odd number of gals. Well, actually, I did end up swapping, Kathy. Me and Beth swapped. So I did get to swap. So she sent this to me for goodies. So bits and bobs. Dove candy wrappers. Those are pretty. And then there's a lady's face in this little escutcheon. Remember the now. See possibilities everywhere. Collect beautiful moments. Oh, this is what was making the noise. The key. And it says memory. And then this. Let's set that on top of the envelope. And I can slide it all in. Know in your heart you are loved. That's so sweet. And then this one says heart on it. And a little bit of trim that's got leaves on it. That'd be cute on the bottom of a fall tag. And then some lace. Oh, one of the leaves did get broken, but that's all right. We'll make it work. So let's see who all's here. Sharon Lombard, Rhonda, Janet, Amy. Hi, Amy. Uh, Lisa, Mindy. Is that everybody or did I miss somebody? Let me scroll back up real quick. Uh, I think I got everybody. Janet, Kimberly557. Hey. And Joan Bell. Hi, Joan. So let's see what else Kathy snuck in a package to me. Let's see. This one says, encourage your hopes, not your fears. We all need to hear that right now. Encourage your hopes, not your fears. And some bits of paper. Now, punch outs like this look really cool glued down on a project. Look at that. I could have two rows of circles. You can also use these as a stencil and just do some paint on top. Or like here, look, apply it to the top of this strip. And it looks like just different little planets behind the strip. That's cool. She's got some little punched out shapes. Oh, there's another leaf that got broken. I bet it got quint scrunched in a thing. Some pu more punch outs. Negatives of the butterflies, some more circles, and um, these are nice on the front of a card, and then put your sentiment in the middle. we got some stamped tissue. Uh-oh. That's got, oh yeah, you guys can see it. There's some more stamping on there. Oh, look, they're kitty cat angel buttons. Aren't those cute? Those are so cute. Aw, sweet. So
so sweet. I've never seen tissue with cats on it like that. Some um, stamped out uh, flowers. Some pretty tissue. Um, I was watching Packer Die, and um, she had the most beautiful tissue paper. And it, I think she said it was a Tim Holtz, and it had large letters on it. Oh, I like this. She stamped on a book page. Isn't that cool? So you could cut those out and apply them to an ATC and then use the other bits on another ATC. Another strip. Some more book paper. Some music paper. And some gorgeous um, yarn or fiber. All right, let me see if I can get it all back in the envelope. And of course, I'm going to use the envelope bits too where she decorated the envelope. Oh, wait. Oh, that's the card. I was going to say there's something else in there. Durr. And I'll use the kitty cat off the front of this as well. Nothing goes to waste. I use it all. If I can get it all back in here so I don't lose any of it. I like that saying. We're going to keep that out. We might use it. All right. So I just had that to cover addresses. Now, somebody was mentioning last week. Hey, Beth. I could watch Packer Die make cards every day, all day. I just, I love to watch how she pulls things together. It just amazes me. So, um, y'all, somebody was mentioning artist trading card um, storage. And so I took it on me and Mary was doing, this is what brought it to mind. Mary was doing um, cigarette box because her, her brother smokes uh, Marlboro 100s. And so I thought in the line of a cigarette box, we could do a box together. All you will need is a heavyweight piece of cardstock. So what I've got here, just an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. We're gonna do some cutting and some um, scoring and then some cut, more cutting and voila, we'll have one of these. So if you wanna play along, this is pretty heavy, listen. It's pretty heavy cardstock. Regular cardstock will work. It's just it won't be as sturdy. So now we're going to open that. I have not glued this together. I'm going to save it, the gluing for a little bit. So this is what we'll have. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to trim our paper down to the longest length here and the widest point here. So I wrote that down and I can tell you those measurements. Okay. I just got to dig out my notes. Dig them out. All right. We've got to trim this paper down to eight and a quarter by 10 and three quarters. That's the first thing. So on your width side, that eight and a half, you need to take a quarter inch off. So I'm going to take a quarter inch off and that'll bring us down to eight and a quarter. We just want to cut just a little bit off that side. And then this side needs to be at 10 and three quarters. So that's another quarter inch. Right, you're just cutting a quarter inch off. Make sure this is at eight and a quarter. Yep. All right. So now you need a score scoreboard. All right. I should have wrote these measurements down. Okay. So the first mark you need to mark at, 
I'll tell you the measurements as we go along here. You're going to score it one and three quarters to start with. So one and three quarters. And then we need the space here. Um, two and three fourths. So what I did is I, I just counted off what I need, but I'll, I'll do the counting and then I'll just tell you the measurement. So so the next score line will be at four and a half. I ought to write these down myself, the score lines. one and three quarters, four and a half, and then I need to come over another one and three quarters. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So the next score line will be at six and a quarter. Six and one quarter. And as soon as I made this box, Scott said, can you make a box that'll hold my route, my um, heads for this machine? And so I made him a box and it needs to be just a little bit bigger for that. So anyway, now we need another two and three quarters. So I'm going to count that off and I'll tell you what the measurement is. Nine inches. And what you have left here should be one and three quarters, okay? Now, what you need to do is we're going to turn this and we're going to mark this at the bottom at one and three quarters, okay? Okay, so you got a mark at the bottom. Now turn your whole thing and mark this at one inch and two and three quarters inch. Okay. And now we're going to fold on all of the lines. Just fold, just fold and fold until you get them all folded. I'm just going to fold on our score lines. Okay. Fold all of these lines. Hi, Sana. Thanks, Janet, for getting those measurements in there. And I'll put them in the description box after I sign off. All right, so you've got them all... They're all scored and they've been folded. All right. Now, on the bottom, what we're going to do is, if you've got the bottom of the box, which is the one that has the single score line on it down here, not where there's two score lines, that's the top of your box. On the bottom of the box, you're going to cut up to the bottom score all along here except when you get over here, you're going to just cut this whole square out. Um, so you're going to cut this square completely off here. I'm going to do this slow so that I don't get too far ahead of you guys. Let me get some scissors. I forgot to grab them. All right. And um, just cut up 
to the score line, not through it, up to it. All right, so you, you keep everything on the bottom. Just cut up the score line and set the last square. You cut that away, okay? So you're going to just cut this one out that was right here. That's trash. Okay, now if you look at your top, we're going to, on the very first score line, the one that was at one inch, you're going to cut away. This entire rectangle that starts at the top and comes all the way down to the second score line. Okay. Now the rest of these, you're going to cut down to the first score line and cut all of this away. And I'm not worried about there being pen on here. I just want you guys to be able to see. So we're going to cut all of this and then all of this right here. You're going to cut that out so it looks just like this, okay? So we're going to cut those out first. I figure if we do these in steps, it will be less confusing. I have to turn it over to be able to cut, of course. And of course, after you've made one of these, you could you might want to make one as a template that you could just lay on a piece of paper and trace around. That's entirely up to y'all. Hi, Eva. And then, um, just like we did on the bottom part, we cut up to the score line. We're going to do that on these others. So there's the score line here. So cut down to the, the next score line, just like that. All right, so you got all of those, okay? Now, on this top flap here that sticks up, you're going to want to cut this at an angle, okay? So you cut just about a quarter inch in. If you wanted to measure it, you could. I'll do that so you guys can see. I'll, I'll mark it and then show you guys with the pen. So mark a quarter inch in. And then go from the score line up to your mark. If you do it this way, you'll have the same, you know, the same little tab if you are, you know, like it to be perfect. And then you can measure in a quarter from this other side and just put a little mark and do the same thing. Line your little mark up on the ruler and take it down to the score line, which is hard to see. So I'm going to mark it <laughs> so I can see it. And then just mark. And you're going to cut those away like that. So we just cut this like this. And cut this down like that. Okay. So you end up with a little tab. Now you also want to create a little tab on these two right here. So you could do the same thing, um, find a distance, but you know what I do? I eyeball it. Bring a little tab down to about halfway down the tab. So I'll come down like to that point on there. These don't have to be perfect. These just fold in and it's easier to get a hold of them 
if you cut a little angle off. All right, so now all you got to do is fold the flaps in at the bottom, bring them together. So you're like this. You fold that the back flap down. Is that the back or is it the front? That's the that's the front. Well, you fold the tab over. I think I'm doing it wrong. There we go. Yeah, you the all right, the side that has the tab that folds down, what's right here will be the front of your box. So I like to fold it around and you work your sides to where the front of the box doesn't have any seams on it. That just makes it look pretty. So then when you push that down and then fold that over, there's no seam at the front of your box. I call that the front of the box. Now, you've got this is in your way. This needs to be cut off too. So go ahead and cut that off from there. I missed that one. All right. So the by folding it that way, you don't end up with a, a lip on the front of the box. And then these just fold in and that goes down and you have a little box. So now I have two little boxes, but I want to decorate my boxes to look like books. So if you make a bunch of these and you line them up together, I want it to look like a row of little teeny books. So I'm gonna do that. And I think, I'm thinking, Think, think, think. I think I'm going to go ahead and glue my box together. I think I will. And then we'll just decorate the outside of the box. Ta-da! So I've got some glue all here because something's happened with my glue, other glue bottles. So this is the side tab that's closest to the, the box closing tab at the top. And I like to push the tabs for the bottom in and then bring this over top. We'll get that glued down there. Uh-oh. It'll probably shift around on you a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to push these in, put some glue, put just a little glue on this tab, and then put some glue on the tabs, the rest of the tabs. And then the side that's got the lip on it, I'm going to push it in first. And then we'll put some more glue on here. Now, if you wanted to send something, if you wanted to make one of these and send it some, to someone else, you could construct it and glue only the sides. That way, I'll show you on the other one. That's what I'll do. That way, you could mail it flat, and then when they got it, they could use the decorated box to store artist trading cards in. I'm just pushing the glue down or the flaps down into the glue on the bottom. And then I won't glue this because you know you want to be able to put your artist trading cards in it. All right. I wanted this to be something you could do with just stuff you have on hand. And if all you have is regular card stock, like I said, it'll work. It just won't be quite as sturdy I'm pushing that down in there into the glue. All right. So now if you wanted to make one, and here's the one I had started with. That's my demo. You could fold this up, right? And just glue this side. And then once it's glued, the box will fold flat. So you could mail it just like that. And then when they got it, they could glue the bottom 
shut. Actually, I got it backwards that way. But they could glue the bottom shut. So if you leave the bottom unglued, then you could send them a gift of an artist trading card and the box all decorated up for them to put artist trading cards in. That would be entirely up to you. So I will glue this up. I had missed scored on this one. This is why that's when you're first trying it, you always have some boo-boos. So I figured this would just be my demo. And, uh, but if I decorate it, nobody would see where I boo-booed. I'm going to hold this for just a second. You like the wavy line inside? <laughs> So what I did is I pulled out a paper pad that has been sitting in my stash for like forever. And I thought if y'all want to, I would show you how I would decorate it to look like a little box. I mean, a book too. If, are you up for that? You want to make a little book box that told artist trading cards and see, I've got some artist trading cards right here and see it fits right in there. I still haven't I ha still haven't decorated these, but it fits perfect. And I thought, you know, if we ever did a themed swap, we could make a box for ourselves for the swap partners. And then when you got your ATCs, you could put them in the box. So I'm going to attempt to decorate one and leave it flat so it can be mailed flat. And I'll decorate one already all glued together. So I'll do two. How's that sound? So if I'm looking at my box, okay, I want the side that doesn't have any seams on it, I think. Or do I want the side? Yeah, let's do the one that has the, the seam on it. Let that side be our spine, our spine, you know. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Sharon and Sharon. So um, what we'll need to do is then this, this, and the bottom of the box would be our pages. So we need to think of some way we could decorate this, this, and the top to look like pages. I'm going to put that in the back of my mind for right now, and we're going to do the covers. So the front of this is two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Two and three quarters by three and three quarters. I'm going to get two pieces of paper. This could be cute as a book cover. Two and three quarters by three and three quarters. So the three and three quarters is your height. And I always save the bits because there's always something you can do with them. And then the two and three quarters. Okay, I'm going to cut that bike off. Do I want to do that or do I want to move it over? I'm going to move it over so I can have the bike on the front of my book. I'll save that piece real quick. Flip this over and then do the two and three quarters for the up from the other way. All right, we'll save that. And then on this piece, I'm going to cut two and three quarters for the back of my book. Okay. And then the spine, the spine is... Um, I'm pretty sure it's one and three quarters. This box will hold probably six to ten artist trading cards. So one and three quarters plus and the three and three quarters, of course, that won't change three and three quarters. But what I want to do is I want to have enough to wrap around a little bit, just like it's a uh, book binding. So the on the binding piece, I would add a half an inch 
So I would go to two and a quarter. So cut a two and a quarter by three and three quarters piece for a binding. So I think I'd like something kind of like that. But let's see what else is in here. I bought this because I thought it was such a cool paper pad. And then I haven't done anything with it. Let's see. I really like that green print. I think I'm going to use this green print as my binding. That could be pretty too, though. And I think I'll do that because this print is on the other piece. So I said, do it two and a quarter. I'll do the two and a quarter. And then I think I'll trim a little bit off this way. The three and three quarters. All right. And yes, I save all the little bits. All right. I'm going to ink my edges. Beth is saying masking tape faux, faux, faux leather look would be cute too. Yep, you could. Um, I'm trying to just use things I have on hand. I actually have some faux, faux leather um, fabric. I have a piece of that left. I thought that would be cute as a um, binding too. But as far as keeping it light, if it's something you're going to use and you don't worry about posting it or mailing it to anybody, um, I'd say go for it. But if it, you want to keep it light for posting to mailing to somebody else as a gift, I would recommend sticking to paper. So this whole idea came from the other night watching Mary decorate a cigarette box. Of course, if you wanted to, we might do that next, depending on if is anybody else has had plans for coming on this afternoon because I don't want to stay on so long. I'm eating up somebody's usual time. But if you don't mind me staying on, we could do like a dirty dozen on just a piece of cardstock and then make a box out of it. And then you'd have it, one that was for like a dirty dozen um, prompt session where we could gift each other artist trading cards that way. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. I don't blame you, Lisa. You know why? I have not bought paper pads in years, but I've got all of these paper pads here that I, I just need to use them up. This could also make for a cute... Um, like if you're giving a bunch of gift cards to a teenager, like at Christmas or whatever, you could just put them in a box like this and then they'd have no excuse for them getting mixed up in the wrapping paper. They'd have, have them all in one box. All right. Now I'm going to say just apply your paper any way you want to. So I've got the side with the crease on it where I glued this side on, I'm going to, I want to cover that with paper. So this will be the front of my book. So I'm going to put this on here and just glue it down there. Or I might use tape. Tape might be easier. Um, don't worry about the thickness, um, Fran. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever your base is. Um, I was saying, if you have a little bit thicker cardboard than what maybe I've used, it'll just add texture to whichever project you use them on. Does that make sense? No, I'm not going to do the spine first. I'm going to do the front because I want the spine 
to come over my paper just a little bit. And see, I don't know if I've cut it long enough. It might need to be more than the two and a quarter. But I was thinking I would glue this on and let that set and then gently fold this over after that had dried a little bit. Because I don't want to cover a lot of my front. I want just a little bit of the, the spine to come around the sides. You might want to cut yours a little to like two and a half instead. I'm going to leave that up to y'all because that's like a personal preference. But I just want to decorate these two boxes real quick. I haven't decided how I would, how to make it, what could I do to give the appearance of pages for the top, bottom, and side? I was talking with Scott that maybe I would just take some white paper and do on the scoreboard, like in every single line across, you know, and make create little bumps, and then maybe take some gold paint and go on the edges, on, I mean, on the raised portion of it to make it look like pages. And when I use this really sticky, sticky tape, I only remove the backing paper a little bit. You like the idea? I was thinking how cute they would be lined up on a shelf together if you made a bunch of these boxes to store stuff in. I thought they'd be just really cute. And I would be using this paper up I've had for ages. I think I bought this when I worked at uh, Joann's. Oh my goodness, that's been a long time now. Yeah, if if I if I was using material or you know something with some give, I would do that, Beth. But that's a good idea. Beth said put some string on the back of it to make it look like it's got those um, raised areas that they do. Let's see if I can get this on here without it running amok on me. Oh, why aren't you sticking, you little booger? Don't you do it. And that is why I only take the tape off a little ways. So I can get it in position before it decides to seal itself entirely down. All right, I will put my back on. And with using a dry tape, you don't, um, you know, you don't get the bubbling in the paper. Janet, that is a good idea. Just make a photocopy of a book, a book side. You could do that. I love making boxes, whether it's out of chipboard or heavy cardstock. Scott said, you should have been a mechanical engineer. I was like, well, at 56 years old, I don't think I'm going to strive to become a mechanical engineer. All right, so I'm going to flip my box over because this is my back of my book here. Well, I might just try my experiment and see how it works. Get me a scrap piece of paper and see what happens when I do that. Of course, um, on, the, on the sides of it, you would have to make sure that you did just maybe this side and around the bottom because the top will have to be, you know, on its own so you can still open the box. 
I don't know how that would be, Beth, to have um, just ends of pages. That's what you need for the outside. You know what I'm, I'm, let me make sure I'm getting this right side up this way. I'm going to try something and if it works, it works. If not, it, it, you guys can watch me flail my arms and that kind of stuff. Right. There's the front and the back. I'm going to put the tape on the box this time instead of the paper. not ripping where I want it to, of course. Oh, you know what? I think I put it on the wrong side, didn't I? I did. Well, I've got tape where I don't need it, but you know what? Maybe we can use it for the page paper that I'm thinking. Oh, now I've got stick them all over me. Stick to the bag, not me. Come on, stick to the plastic bag. I'm going to start asking at the grocery store if they'll give me paper bags, and then I'm going to use the paper bags for trash bags. I'm so sick of plastic. Let's see if we can make this work. I'll look at chat here in just a second. Probably out of line. Hi, Josie. Hi, Barb. All right. I'm going to try to center this. So I end up with the same amount on each side. I'll just gently break the paper fibers over the edges. Well, that's probably a very good thing, Barb. I keep thinking I'm going to get some like gauze, um, fabric gauze, not not medical gauze, but fabric gauze. I've been thinking about getting some and making myself some lightweight vegetable bags so that um, I won't have to bring home those plastic that they make you put the vegetables in. I am making an artist trading card box, ATC boxes, to store your ATCs in. This way they won't get dusty. Just your little box will get a little dusty every once in a while. I'm holding this down while it sticks in place. Oh, sorry, Aunt. Could be Aunt, could be termite. We had the house inspected here, so it shouldn't be a termite. 
And I decided to make it look like a little book if I can. I guess you could also, if you wanted to, put some washi tape on the back of it. Hopefully that'll glue down there. The vegetable bags, I was I want something they can easily see through is what I was thinking. But if I got a light lightweight enough fabric, I could do that too. So there you go. The front of my book, the spine, and the back. And now here, I wanted to do something that would kind of look like the, the pages on a book, like, like that. Not actually book pages, but the edges of the page. So it would actually look like a little book. And I thought about doing just a piece of white paper and do that technique I was talking about. So I might do that real quick. And I might just put individual pieces like one here, one here, and one here. And that way the box, you can still get your box open. I'm trying to open it on the wrong side. Yeah, that's the front. Yeah. So let's see what we can do here. Let me grab a piece of... Um, I think this is just plain white cardstock. And it doesn't have to be a lot either. Let's cut a piece off from here. I'm going to try something. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it does, it'll be, oh, how cool. Wish I thought I'd do that before. Um, I'm just going to cut. I'll do a four inch piece. Let's set that aside. Might could even go this way. Yeah. And I'm just going to start from this end and go in every single one. And create my own uh, wavy paper. I think Howard would like to come in. After all, it's been a whole hour since he had three morsels to eat. People think it's funny. Our cat's name is Howard. Well, one of our cats. We have too many cats. We have cats out the wazoo. If you count all of the cats, even the spare one on the porch and the other house, we count my son's cats and the cats here. We have seven cats. That's cats out the wazoo. This is probably way more than I need, but if it works out, I want to have enough for the other box. Whoa. I started thinking about something else and my, <laughs> my mind disconnected from the tool. Okay, 
So now turn it over and we've got raised edges. And I was thinking I'm going to take this here and my finger and just put gold paint and try to get it mostly on just the edges, the ridges. Of course, it's not going to go just in the ridges, so I'm just going to spread paint on here. Of course, if you had gold paper, all, all you would have to do is put the lines in it. Don't think I have any gold paper. I used to have some, but you could do that too. That mirrored paper, though, it's it's kind of on the pricey side, so I don't generally buy that stuff. Do just a little bit more. Because I don't know if this is going to look, you know, how I envision or not. Howard's given up on me, I think. All right. Dry this real quick. Yeah. Oh, it's not plugged in. That's why it's not working. I've got my um, Timber Brown Distress Ink here. I might use a little bit of it too. Let me get my legs discombobulated from the chair. Let's see. I was going to show the blooms again while I'm drying that I went and picked for y'all. For those that missed them. Some flowers. So they really pretty this year. The camellia, one camellia bush is really putting on a show. Here, let's take use some of this. Just a minute. I'm going to come open the door. dog is snoring and the cat wants in. They're going to tear the door apart. Hang on just a second. So all of these side measurements are one and three quarter inches. So I'm going to cut these here. Yes, Howard's very demanding sometimes. So one and three quarters. Here. 
and one and three quarters. I don't guess you'd have to put any on the very bottom of it, but why not? I think my blade's getting dull. That seemed to drag really bad. And of course, you know, I don't need the full lengths on these. Because the top and the bottom aren't, you know, as tall as the tall. As, as the tall. Woo. I'm making a artist trading card storage box to look like a book. And this is how I'm making the, the pages of sorts. All right, so this piece will glue down right here, and it's a little too long. So I need to cut off about that much to fit there. Okay, I need to ink that edge up again. And since I boo-booed earlier, I already have tape here. All right, so does that look like pages? Kinda. That might need some finessing. <laughs> All right, and then this piece, I will cut about there. Do all right. It's a little wonky. That's what happens when you eyeball. <laughs> Comes out a little wonky. Okay, then we'll put some tape and glue that there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to um, cut the top piece because the top and the bottom should be the same, right? That piece will go there. This piece will go on the top. And of course now Howard wants, he's eaten three pieces and now he wants to go back outside because that's Howard. I got lots of hi guy. We so enjoyed watching you make your ATCs. And here's a box to store ATCs in. So you don't get them all dirty and dusty and all. You don't have to put them in a binder always. Make your own storage. I've got a needy cat at the moment. He's uh, wanting lots of attention for some reason. All right. It looks kind of like a book. Now this piece, I want to be careful I don't tape down my lid. Oh man, I hate when I do that. Where the tape grabs and pulls the, the box apart. Very annoying. It's 
because y'all are watching. I can't get the tape off. Everybody turn around. <laughs> so I'll put the measurements on how to make the little boxes um, as soon as I wrap up. Howard, please stop. I'll be there in just a minute. I can understand why Barb keeps her two in the in another room. There we go. We made a little book box. You could put a little title. Like we might put this on here that Kathy sent me. It says, encourage your hopes, not your fears. I might put that right there. Oh, my goodness. So you want to go back out, dude? Okay, go. Y'all probably heard him knocking. Bam, 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 bam. He sounds like a human. I'm gonna put this on here with some um, E6000. We'll set it aside to be stinky off on the corner of the table for a minute. Now, if you guys want to do a dirty dozen with me, uh. And I'll decorate this one off camera. I'm not going to do that one with you. But I was thinking I would do another brown sheet. Um, and we could do a dirty dozen on it. And then create a box out of that. I'm going to clean up my mess just really, really fast. Put my little bits in here. Because you, you save all the little bits. It's required. Because you never know when you might need just a little bit. Right? Right, so I'm gonna glue this on here. With some E6000, maybe. Every time I use E6000, I think about my sister who's an art teacher and how she said her tube of E6000 had all of these sewing pins shoved into it because any time, because her lid was glued on and she couldn't get the lid off. So what she would do is anytime she needed to use it, she'd stick another pin in the side and make a hole to get the glue out. So she had all these pins stuck in the side of her tube of E6000. The thing I hate about this stuff is it smells. It works good. It just stinks. All right. And it won't quit squidging out. Let's see if I can do this without flipping it and have it go crazy. Courage your hopes, not your fears. That's the name of my little book box. So I think that turned out stinking cute. So if you guys want to make some and share them in groups, that would be... Um, That'd be cool. Yours always dries up too. Yeah. And it's so expensive. So I'm going to set this aside. I just think it turned out pretty cool. So grab a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And we'll do a uh, prompt session on here. And uh, then I'll make a box out of it. So let's set this over where it won't get paint and stuff on it. All right. We got to think about the stuff we add to this because it, we are going to. Um, awesome, Fran. Um, we've got to be able to fold it later. Okay. The E6000, I can usually wipe it off with a paper towel. It might leave some paper towel residue on it, and then I just wash up soap and water. All right, so Barb's playing with me. All right, I think the first thing I'm going to do, since I'm using brown card stock, is I'm going to gesso my paper. So if you want to gesso your paper with white or black gesso, I'm going to leave that up to you. But the first thing I'm going to do is, um, you know what? I forgot to write down these other measurements. I'll figure it out. I'll make sure they're in there. So we're going to write the prompts here. So prompt one is going to be gesso. Just because I want to get something on here. 
one gesso, either black or white or gray or clear, whatever you've got. I've got some black. I'm going to use it. Hi, Chris. Oh, I'm glad you like the quilt. The quilt um, turned out a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. See, I wasn't using the exact counts that the pattern said to use. I was just using um, strips, the two and a half inch strips I had received in strip swaps over the years with my online quilting group um, because I've just... Decided that since we lost Anne, one of our members passed away, that I would like to use those strips that it, some of them she had given me and make a quilt for Scott and I. And so I started working on it and I just used all of the full width strips I had. So I actually have enough to do a large quilt for us and then a smaller like lap quilt or a child's quilt that I might go ahead and finish up and then maybe one of the nieces or nephews would like it for Christmas or something. And something I like to do with gesso is put it on a little bit thicker than I normally would and then get just a little bit more on my palette knife and then just raise and lift and give it texture that way. turn this whole thing so I can get this other side. I don't have any um, water or anything in here to dunk stuff in, so I need to run and get that. Probably ought to move my teacup so I don't accidentally stick a palette knife of gesso into my tea. Like that's never happened to anybody. share it the next time I come live um, as far as I've gotten it so far. I've got the the strip pieces are, are done, but um, I'm going to sew some blocks to go along the edge and I haven't got those done yet. And those again are just um, from my scraps of, that I cut into squares. I'm going to make nine patch blocks with those. So I might Maybe that's what I'll do tomorrow is show the quilts and work on the nine patches with you guys. It might be boring to sit and just watch me sew, but it's something I wouldn't mind doing. I've got me a, a tub for water, so I'm going to move my tea, take a sip. I'll set my tea over on Scott's desk. All right, I'm going to dry this because it's really wet. <laughs>
Yeah, all of the schools are closed here in South Carolina. Yeah, I could probably make pillow shams, Joyce. You're right. Yeah, Lisa, are you going to be on? Okay, definitely um, going to try to get over there, making some more pockets for the lap book. It doesn't really matter. We're going to cut this up and make it into a box when we're done. I want to keep some of the veining, though, because it makes it look cool. Yeah, it's turned off chilly here. It's not cold, but it's chilly. So I think the next one, next prompt should be um, to add a color. So what color do y'all want to add? Y'all tell me what color you want to add. Yeah, I think a lot of the school, pink, okay. Got to add pink now. You can add your pink any way you want. There's Kathy. Hey, Kathy, I enjoyed my happy mail. Thank you very much. So I'm seeing uh, pink, silver, or blue. So I'm going to do pink because it was the first thing called. But y'all, if you don't care for pink and you want to use silver or blue, you go for it. But the prompt is add pink. I got to get this black dry or the pink won't show. And see, I'll have some um, inchies or twinchies from the cutaways for, to make a box. So I'll have some inchies I can make out of this to add to my, my uh, swap pile. Let me go grab some pink. I still got black on there. I might lay another piece on it to pick some of it up. Pink. Oh, there's not much left in there. This one. All right, I'm just going to sponge it on a little bit. Uh, Kristen, I have not seen any uh, thing about restaurants. I know there's a website we can go to to see what's closed, but um, so far nothing. I'm going through the wettest black to try to pick some of it up. And then I'm going to get a clean sponge. I'm 
see if I can drive some. And then we'll try pink again. So I don't know who else besides me and Janet, uh, me and Barbara are playing, but I'm glad that y'all have just come to hang out. And um, see if we can just have some fun today. Sponging's not working for me, so you know what? I'm gonna pull out my my Bondo spreader. That's better. And you know, there's always that ugly, ugly stage of any project that you just have to get through. It looks white, but it's not. It's pink. It's baby pink. Just trying to get some pink everywhere. All right. Good enough. All right. So. I'm going to say we do something with silver next. I'm going to use the colors that were called out, but I, now I need a technique. What can we do with silver? Anybody want to tell me a technique to do with silver? You know, like um, stencil, splatter, uh, doodle, anything. Somebody call it out. Splatter. Splatter with silver. All right, we'll splatter with silver. And then I'll dry really, 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 really well. <laughs> silver. I know I have, I bet it's still on the table. That's why I can't find it. The silver's still here on the table, and I did not get the fan brush. This is going to be hard to get the silver out because it's that um, Waverly paint. And I think this has some watercolor in it, so I might get a little watercolor mixed in here. Splatter with silver. All right, I'm going to spray a little water. A little bit more water. Probably going to pick up some black. Can't seem to get away from the black.
And Scott, if you're watching, this is how paint gets all over my computer, dear. <laughs> I'm putting a good bit of splatter because you know how it gets lost underneath. Okay, there we go. Good enough. I'm just going to sop that up so I don't accidentally spill it on something else. All right, so let's dry it good. It does kind of make it look green, doesn't it? Raindrops in our pink snowstorm. <laughs> tissue paper next. Add tissue. It can be packaging tissue. It can be the back of the napkins. It can be a napkin. You know, whatever you consider tissue, use it. I'm going to use, I'm going to use actual tissue paper, but I got to get this dry some first. All right, Lisa, we'll see you later. Okay. Everybody go see Lisa tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time. And that's Lisa, My Eclectic Life. If you're not subbed, do it before she scrolls off the screen. She's been making a lap book. I just didn't jump in on that project because I'm trying to just limit myself. So I... I can get some things done that I need to do that I've started previously, put it that way. I need, I have a, an abundancy of unfinished projects that I need to take the time to finish. So let's see, I'm going to need some um, either gel medium or Mod, uh, Mod Podge and some tissue. And my glue brush, which is out in the kitchen, of course. And I'm not going to cover the whole thing in tissue. I'm just going to put a few pieces of tissue down here and there. You don't have to cover the whole thing. You're okay, puppy. Go back to sleep. It's okay. Didn't mean to wake you. Sorry, dear. I think I really need heavy matte gel medium for this. And this I got out of the bins at the Goodwill one time. Scott's like, what do you want that piece of paper for? And I'm just like, because it's cool. That's why. I don't even need this much. Let me get some regular Mod Podge.
Is it over here? It's on the floor right next to me. I'm looking all over the place and can't find it. And it's because it's right here on the floor. What's Barbara talking? Oh, I bet that's pretty. Yeah. The the waiting for things to dry sometimes. <laughs> this is some interesting tissue paper. Um, it's thicker than I'm normally used to using, so I'm wondering if I can just paint the Mod Podge on the back and then stick it down. And not disrupt my uh, my spots and dots and things. I think I'm going to be able to. I'll look at chat here in just a sec. I probably ripped up way more paper than I'm actually going to use. So I'm not real worried about covering the top of it right now because I'm, I usually will clear coat, you know, my whole... When I'm done, I usually clear coat the whole sheet. And I don't know what y'all are going to have me do next. So, seems weird not seeing the school buses. That's weird. Yeah, I'm, I probably got way more paper than I'm going to need. I think Howard's back being annoying. Uh, maybe one there and one over here, and then we're going to be done with this part. So I'll be ready for another prompt. What do y'all want to do next? Somebody call out something. One more little piece down there. All right. All right. Emma says um, the, uh, stamping. Now, stamping can be with rubber stamps. It can be with um, something household, um, in paint, in ink, whatever you want to stamp with. And I think I'm going to do stamping with paint with a household item. So I'm just going to write stamping and let you guys decide 
what you want that to mean to you. So that number five will be stamping. All right. I'm going to dry this a little. Let's see. I think I'm going to continue on the, the pink theme and I'm going to stamp with a darker pink. I'm going to use Royal Fuchsia. Let's see. Oh, what did I do with my box of stuff? It's right here beside me. Stamping. All right, I'm going to stamp with this piece of stuff. I'm not sure where I got it or when I got it or whatever, but I'm going to use it. It's like a, it's a cutout for something, but I don't remember where I got it or anything. Scott would probably say something. Do we want to just write these down? So if we do stamping, and then number six could be stencil. Number seven could be add circles. Okay, so that gets us to number seven. So let me catch up with you guys. <laughs> Let's see. And things like this, I don't clean. I just throw them back in my bin. And then if I use them again, and some of this pink comes off on the next project, it's just added color. All right, so I'm going to stencil now. So six will be stencil. We'll put that back in the bin. I'm going to dry this real quick, though, first. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Thanks, Janet. I think I'm going to get one of my doily scent stencils. Barb, I don't know if it's a pot scrubber or not. I think it's something that was a cutout for like a buffing disc for a big scrubber. And I think this is where the unit attached on and this was just pushed out. But I can't be certain. Um, but a pot scrubber would make a cool texture like that. See how it just does like little dots? So don't be afraid to look at household stuff with a different view. Your, your housemates or husband might think, have you lost your blip in mind? But no, you didn't lose your mind. You found a new art supply. I'm sorry, Bernie. I keep waking you up. This is your nap time, isn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to sleep here, Mother. I'll 
We'll stay in the kind of pinkish family here. Vivid Violet. And I'm going to do this stencil. This is this, uh, one of the stencils I got in that set I got on Amazon not too long ago. I think I've shared a link for it, too. If And I'll try to remember to put a link again. I don't have an affiliated, um, you know, thing with Amazon. I just think these were not that expensive, and they're just, it was so many uh, stencils. And they're all unique and different. You could even get mandala ideas from them, shapes to do. need more paint. Yep, two and a half by three and a half is an artist trading card. It could be that. I don't know. It's one of those things either Scott or I picked it up with the idea that I would use it just like I did. Scott's pretty good about saying, I think you could use this, and, you know, handing me stuff. He said, I saw this, and I thought you could use it. And one more right here. Maybe just a tiny little bit right here on this corner. Of course, it's probably in an area I'm going to cut away anyway when I make the box, but maybe not. There we go. And I'll try to remember to look these up and put them in the description box. All right. And then what was the next thing? Add circles. Add circles. And I might go back to, um, I'm going to do add circles with blue. And I'm going to make it a different kind of blue. Let's see. Not really a true blue, I don't think. Bluebird. I'm going to do Bluebird with a curler. Bluebird with a cooler. Curler. Cur cool -a Hi, Carol. Hi, Joyce. Barb, I hear you. Scott was saying on his way out the door to work that he's ready for some sunshine. I'm ready to have some weather where I can have the windows open to clear the air inside this house.
Let's add some different size circles. Add my smaller curler. I guess that's good enough on, on circles. That sounds like a woodpecker. We've got a couple peleated, we think, are working on a nest in the gum trees in the side yard here. Because um, they it's not like they're feeding, it's like they are. They're spending some time up in that tree, you know, really railing on it. Scott says he thinks he's hollowing it out for a nest. Tap, tap, tap. Yep. All right. So we're up to number seven. So you guys call out some prompts. We need... What's going to be number eight? Thanks, Beth. What's number eight going to be? Becky, if you have time, could you give us the measurements for cutting down a big sheet for ATCs? Thanks. I will. I can. Let's finish this and then we'll do that, Gloria. Is that okay? I'm going to make a box out of this. I'm not going to do ATCs, but I can show you on another piece of paper. Okay, awesome. We've got just five prompts left to go. All right, so number eight. Let's do, what would y'all like to do for eight? Use a credit card. So you, you can eat with a credit card, you can either scrape or you can make lines. So scrape or make lines. Is number eight. And I'm just, I'm going to use my Bondo spreader because I don't have a credit card. So I'm going to do lines. And I'm going to use Bahama Blue because it, for some reason lately it's been my favorite color. Makes me think of summertime.
paper. I'm going to set that aside for just a second. Bring my scrap paper in here. Scrape up some of this paint I got out. Then I'm going to dry. All right, I'm going to call the next one. I want y'all to use a handmade stamp. Handmade stamp. And you can use ink or paint, whichever you prefer. I'm going to use my um, stamps that I made out of the old yoga mat. I'm going to put some flowers on mine. After the lines, I'm going to use the handmade stamp. Let's see if I can find them. There they are. I'm going to use my crazy yoga mat flower. I'm going to do that in yellow. Because I can and I want. Man, I think I need to buy some craft paint. <laughs> I didn't realize I was getting this low on stuff. All I need to do is one one thing of um, jelly printing, and I will have used up a bunch of paint. I ought to do that sometime, too. And I'm just going to put the paint on with a sponge. This is just bits of yoga mat attached to a piece of heavy card cardboard is all I did to make these. And then I cut them kind of in a flowery shape. I put a piece of foam under this paper it would probably print better but there we go that's a little better I got it I got enough paint on it that time Yeah, I'm going to try to come on each day at about 3 o'clock. Um, of course, if I see somebody else is already on, I might back off, you know, because they've, they've got a set time they like to do. But I just thought it would be fun to have something to do every day. So if you wanted to do this, this prompt session, you could make a box and then you could take the prompts that we use today and just mix them up and do a couple more backgrounds and mix them up. So they come out diff at different times. You know what the prompts, 
you would pull your own prompts from the prompts we used. And you'd be surprised how different something will look by the order that the prompts are called. And then what you could do is make artist trading cards and fill your box and gift it to somebody as just a little surprise. And that would be something to fill your time too. It'd be nice if we could like have people on enough to where there's something going on 24 seven while we're dealing with this, this health crisis in this country. And then that way there'd always be somebody to watch and there'd always be something to do. And the time would pass so much quicker and we wouldn't have so much time to think about things. And we will have created a mountain of art by the end of the time you know, by the end of the times that they're keeping people away and out of public eye in time. And before we know it, it, the time will have passed and we'll have art to share and that kind of stuff. All right. And this I definitely don't wash because it's made out of cardboard. So that just gets put back in my, my bin with my curlers and stuff. Yep, that was my plan too, Beth. Go sort through stuff you've been putting off. That's another thing to do. And then when, you, when we can go out and about again safely, we can take all that stuff we're never going to use to the um, Goodwills and recycling centers and all of that. We'll have nice clean houses. And we'll be ready to get down to making making art some more. All right. I just used the dog wipe. This is for the dog's ears and nose. <laughs> but she, she, she lets me use them. All right. Number 10, you guys. What do you guys want to do for number 10? What should we do next? Redonation, exactly. It is it is a kind of a redonation. <laughs> Barbara, you crack me up. <laughs> Barbara says, Boy, I hope this is over with before I'm compelled to go clean the garage. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, nine was a handmade stamp. You got it. You typed it in. Somebody typed it in. I thought it was you. Eight was the credit card. Scrape or make lines with a credit card. And then nine was um, handmade stamps. Uh, we already did splatters. Add a butterfly or a bee maybe. I'm going to put that on here, but I'm going to hold that. So I can put the butterfly or bee on the, well, no, you know what? I was thinking I'd put it just on the front. But let me dry it good. And I think I'm going to stamp a bee all over here. I could do that. Let me dry it good, though, because I'm going to use ink and I don't want to ruin my ink pad. And then if I want, I could add a dominant bee. changed my mind. I'm going to hold that one and I'm going to call number 11 and I'm going to say um, doodle because I want to doodle on my flowers to bring them out and then I'll add the bees. I'm going to doodle now. Let's see what we've got here. Is it dry? 
That's the thing. Is it dry? Let's see if the Sharpie will work. If not, I've got Posca pens. And through the wet paint, and there goes that Sharpie. That's not really showing. Let me see. I've got Posca pens here somewhere. Let me grab a Posca pen. I'm a rebel of my own thing. Yep. <laughs> Let's see. I'm not nearly the rebel that Mary is. I'll watch her where she's been playing along and taping. And next thing I know, she says, rebel. I'm rebelling. And I'm like, you go, girl. I'm just going to outline my flowers. I have been known to come in with a paintbrush and just fill in um, my flower components before. But I think this time I'm just going to leave them as the stamp was made. You can't hardly see the first one I did here. kind of a pitiful little flower stamp, but it was my first attempt at using the old yoga mat as a thing to cut shapes out of. There's a hawk outside just raising cane, and um, Scott said there was a pair of hawks in the woods behind the cottage, and they were absolutely losing their mind and then he saw there's an owl out there. I said, I bet that owl is looking for their nest. You think it needs dots on the yellow, Beth? Well, maybe we'll make dots the next prompt. How about that? So prompt 12 will be dots. And that'll have us all done.
So I'm going to put number 12 as do, uh, dots. And I think I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to cut this out. I'm thinking. I'm, I was thinking I'd cut this out and put the B on the front of the box. I don't know. Maybe I'll just stamp them. I could stamp bees and then there'd be a little bit of bees here, there and everywhere. And then put like a focal image bee on the front of the box. That might be cool looking. So it looks like he's in a hive. Oops. Stuck to my finger. I'll just put some dots around the middles on my flowers. I need to catch up with chat. You guys have been probably chatting along without me. Let's trim um, some of this mess off the edges real quick. I might show you on the back of this how to cut your ATCs out. Since it's going to be on the inside of the box anyway. Let me dry this real quick. I've got a whole bunch of notifications filling up my screen here. Let me get rid of these so I can see the chat. It's going to be a pretty box. Yep. <laughs> I've got the, the black ink out. I mean, the brown ink. I want the black ink. And my B stamp. Let me get my B stamp. My dollar bin B stamp that I'm so glad I bought because I have not seen them have the dollar bins anymore. They're like $2, but now they've, they've gotten to where they don't even do them much anymore. I used to hate having to do that reset on those, but I kind of miss the products now that I'm not working and I can go and play. Now they don't have the same stuff anymore. Nothing stays the same. Oh, I want to make sure these print good. So let me get a piece of children's foam under here. I'll get these stamped out and dry it. And then I'll flip it over and mark out how to... Um, Cut out your artist trading cards.
And what, what's really cool about this stamp is you can go back and like color in the black parts darker if you wanted to or paint the yellow in. I've done both. I've done all of that. But I thought these would be kind of in the background and then I'll do a focal image B on my own that I can draw in and maybe paint. And these little guys will just be kind of floating in the background. And my off cuts from making the box, I'll make as part of my twin twinchies and inchies. I don't know if I gain twinchies because everything's going to be real close. Let's put a B right here. So they're kind of there. And then when I um, drew my B last time on my big project, I just use this stamp as my guideline and just drew it. So I might do that on here. But let's talk about um, getting as many ATCs out of a, this is an eight and a half by 11 piece of card stock. So I'll show you how to get, I think it's 10 ATCs out of this. So here's how it, it's eight and a half by 11. All right. So you're going to get two rows that you're going to measure at the two and a half. So go ahead and let me use the big pen. Mark it two and a half and five. Okay. We'll mark those. two and a half and five and I can't even see that mark there we go so you would cut at the two and a half inch mark there two and a half and two and a half and then we're not going to worry about this part right here. Then this other way, of course, mark at the three and a half. So there's three and a half and three and a half and three and a half is seven. And three and a half would put you at, no, three and a, yeah, three and a half and three and a half is seven. And then another one, two, three and a half would put you at ten and a half. Three and a half, seven, and ten and a half. Okay. Then you're going to mark. I would just use my um, my cutter and cut off five inches from here. And then get the, uh, the divide that in half, and that's two and a half. But I don't want to cut this. All right. So that gives you six ATCs, two, four, six. So this way, you're going to measure this section at three and a half, which is, that's exactly what's left. Okay. So you get three and a half inches left here. So now you'll mark it at two and a half inches down through. So two and a half and two and a half and then five and then seven and a half and ten. That's every two and a half inches. Two and a half, five, Seven and a half, 
and 10. And that'll give you four ATCs this way. So that's 10 ATCs out of one eight and a half by 11. Does that help? And um, like Beth said, you can make your, your own little cheat sheet if you wanted to. You know, just draw this up one time and then you'll always have it. And the only waste you're going to have is this little bit here and these two little strips. And even those, if you save them, you can use them to make cards. All right. So that's how you would cut. So I hope that's helpful because um, Gloria wanted to know how, how to cut the ATCs to get, you know, 10 out. That's the max you can get. So now I'm going to revert back and I'm going to do the, the box measurements. It's somewhere here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cut this to the size I need it, which is eight and a quarter by 10 and three quarters. So I need to cut it in a quarter inch off from all sides. And so I'm just going to stick this in and line this up with the quarter inch on here. And see, even that can be saved and made into some. Hang on, I gotta chase this straight off. You leave him alone. Sorry, Howie. You okay? You okay, buddy? You go on. Callie. They're looking at me like, Mom, we were going to cope. You didn't have to come out here. <laughs> you can tell it's cat mating season from the number of strays we've had around here. I'm glad all of my cats are spayed and neutered. So even that, I would save and make cards with it. I'd just keep, put little strips in a row. And it would look really cool. So there's my, there's that. Now I need to do all of my scoring. Yep, every little bit can be used, um, most definitely. I'm gonna turn, well, I'm gonna turn this over to score. So I've got this in here. I need to score at one and three quarters. It's going to be hard to score through all of that paper. And then four and a half. And then six and a quarter. And this is where I forgot to write the next measurement down, which needs to be two and three quarters. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Quarters makes one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Nine inches is the last score line. Let me write that down here because y'all are going to want that measurement. Nine inches. All right. Then I'm going to turn and I'm going to score at one and three quarters on this side. And then one inch, whoops, one inch and two and three quarters. All right. Then I'm going to fold on all my score lines so I can see them better. See, I don't have my, my cheater box. I've, I've glued it together. So 
I'm going to have to think about this again. It's got this doggone thinking. <laughs> oh, that piece of tissue paper made me jump. Did you see me jump? So that's why I say sometimes you should always make yourself a template and just keep it so that you can remember where everything needs to be cut away. And All right. Some of that Posca pen wasn't totally dry. So first thing you do is at the bottom is cut up to the on that score line to the first score line in the cross direction. And this is the bottom of your box. And then this last square you cut totally out. And see right there, I have a twin, uh, an inchy. I can cut that down for an inchy. So there's my bottom. There's the tabs and the front and the back. Those you, you leave. Okay. Now we're going to, on this top piece, cut everything away except this tab flap right here. So you cut this rectangle away. You're going to cut more than this away, but. For right now, just focus on one score line area at a time. We'll cut over there. Oh, I don't need to do that. I need to cut this all the way away. So all you leave on this short tab is the part that tucks into the box. Okay, now we need to cut down in on all these lines to the first score line. Okay. It helps me if I fold them up, I can see what needs to be cut away. All right, so these are the two tabs that fold in. All right, so now on this top, we should only have one of these tabs here. So we're gonna cut this one away right here. All right, so then again, if you close your box up and you look at it, how it is, all right, these two fold in and all you need is the tab to click in. So this tab can get cut away. So we're gonna cut that tab away too. So basically you could cut from here over in. So you end up with two tabs, two tabs, and then the top. Get rid of all of this over here. And again, on these, I like to do these at a little bit of an angle, cut a little angle on the tabs, just on the top. I don't worry about the angles on tabs on the bottom because they're going to be glued shut. And I'm just eyeballing and do your little tab that clucks, it, clucks in. Sound like it's a chicken. All right. So now... I fold those up first, bring them around. I want this to go inside that. And I want this under there. Because on the side, when you open the box, I don't want there to be any seams there. That's why I do that. 
So there, we've made a dirty dozen box to hold artist trading cards in. Ta-da! Was I a bit out of shot? I'm sorry. Did you all get to see what I did? Do I need to back up? Um, and what I might do, this is going to be the front. This is where I need to paint a B on the front of the box. Sorry, I was out of shot. So here's what it looks like all folded out. So once you cut it down to the um, eight and a quarter by 10 and three quarters, I'm going to put the measurements in where you score it. And then basically on the bottom, you keep all the tabs, one, two, three, four tabs along the bottom, cut out one square. On the top, you're going to cut off everything from this over at the top that was right here. And then you're going to trim these two to the first score line so you have tabs that are shorter than the part that tips into the box. I hope that makes sense. Oh, I was just cutting the corners off like this. I just um, do like a little angle to give it like dog ears. Oh, Josie had to go. Bye, Josie. Hi, Ray. You snuck in. I didn't see you. Oh, dear. Uh, Gloria, did you get the measurements for the ATCs? I know the measurements were here, but... Um, you can still kind of see them. So the front of the box will be this one. So that's where I'll put my little B. And um, let me see how many ATCs I can get out of my scraps. Not ATCs. Inchies. And I'll put an, a B on the front of this. I could almost do that with the box glued shut and just paint on the front of it, like right there. It's pretty sturdy. This is that really heavy cardstock. Yeah, that, that's true. You can uh, replay it, and I showed how to make these at the beginning. I don't know why this is acting so weird right here. I'm not sure why that's not pushing down in flat. That's better. I don't know. That's kind of weird. I think, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear coat this after I paint the B on, and then I'll glue it. So I'm going to I'm going to do the B just watching something on here and let you guys go, because I'm sure there's somebody else on live. But let's just see what we can get as far as inches. And I'm going to save all the little bits. So if I trim this down to one inch by one inch, let's see. I can get one that way, and then I'll have a scrap. I can get one here, and I'm trying to cut it so that B is on there because that's like an instant inchy. And then, see, I can go in, and I might, on the inchies, I might paint the B, put yellow in his body, and then on his wings, I might use that um, glitter glue on the wings and then just let it dry, and that'd be a ready-made inchy. There's one inchy. Is this even an inch wide here? Just barely. So we turn it this way. I'll get one inchy out of this one. And another little scrap for my scrap pile. That's close enough to an inchy. And then this one, we might could get a couple inchies. Let's see. I love my rotary cutter, man. I don't know what I'd do without it. Let's see. It's just sticky enough that it's sticking to me instead of what it needs to. Save the bits. I'll cut these and then I'm going to let you guys go. I just want to see how many inches I can get out of here out of the bits from making a box. 
I hear you. I'm going to come get you in just a minute. Needy felines. They're very needy. And see, this is just done on the heavyweight card stock. So even that'll work for inches. Now this one's got the folds in it. Let me see if it's even an inch wide, is it? Just barely. So if I cut on that score line, that'll clean that up. And there's an, another inchy. And see, I can, all I got to do to finish them up is stick a button or um, a bit of lace or something or a little piece of acrylic or little bling of some sort. I just want to tell you how many inchies I'm going to get out of my leftovers before I go. And then I'll do my B and see if somebody else is on and watch them for a while while I'm painting a B. Yeah, that'll work. This one, I might even get one more. It might have a bit of the score line on it, but it's still an inchy. So that is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten inches. A box and ten inches. Yes. Prompt 12 was make dots. And I might make more dots. I've been known to go back in after we sign off and add, like, I might add borders. After I paint my B on here, I might put a border around it on all the sides. But I'll post pictures in my group and on Fibsville. You guys, I'm going to have to let you go before Howard, like, pets the door to death. Okay? And um, everybody, chin up. We'll make it. Everybody's going to make it. We just got to stay as healthy as we can. Wash your hands. Do all the stuff they say. And I wish you all well. And I will see you later.